Hey you guys, welcome back to Nicole Talks. So as I was working on a surviving Diddy video that I was working on over the last, what, four or five days, I couldn't help but notice the change in Cassie's photos. Her personality even changed. Soon as Diddy signed her to uh, Bad Boy, to his record label, um, and he took her from Ryan Leslie, her whole image changed. She went from being this sweet girl next door teenager that was always smiling looked like she was really happy to becoming very seductive um her makeup even changed her her personality looked like it changed and as i was looking all these things up i also realized that cassie was only 17 when she started this relationship with ryan leslie in 2004 and even though she became legal you know the legal age 18 that doesn't really make it right but to me a grown man wanting to be with a 17 18 year old is there's some grooming involved in that and i don't even think cassie was able to realize that she's kind of young and naive you know 17 18 years old but diddy and ryan leslie these were grown men that were looking at cassie you know in a in a way um, that I feel isn't inappropriate and most people do as well. Now, if you look at some of these pictures, I mean, she went from girl next door to her facial expressions even look different. Like she looks empty, her makeup gets darker. Uh, you know, he has her change her hair and cut demands that she cuts her hair off on the side. That was a look Diddy wanted. This was not Cassie's choice. Um, and then she just is overly sexualized. Um, even some of these photo shoots that um, Diddy would have her do. I mean, there she's not wearing very many clothes. She's exposing her body more. And it doesn't look like she's even enjoying this. Um, this was a grooming that I believe started when she was, you know, 17, 18 years old. Diddy signs her to his label and, you know, she's excited. Now, who does this remind you of? Birds of a feather flock together. Okay, R. Kelly and Diddy are good friends. And remember a year ago, R. Kelly said, I'm not the only one, meaning he's not the only one you know, participating in those type of behaviors with young girls, even girls of age, um, giving them alcohol and substances, keeping them um, against their will. Cassie says in the lawsuit that she would try to leave numerous times and his staff would keep her from leaving. Also, the big question is, where were Cassie's parents? Both of her parents were alive at the time. This is Cassie's mother. And to know that your young daughter, not to blame them, but to know that your young daughter is being handled by all of these men and you don't know what's going on. So Cassie says in the lawsuit, she mentions um, that Diddy had tricked Ryan Leslie into making her go with him or letting her go with him. And the first time she was with him, they were intimate. He forced her to do substances. Um, and she never left Diddy since then. Um, that lets me know that he had motive already. He already had agenda for Cassie. Every song that Cassie put out after me and you flopped. Every time she tried to work on a project, it never got completed. It was because she was never meant to be this star that he probably told her he was going to make her. She became his girlfriend. He solicited her out in different states forced a self-honor against her will i mean and i don't mean this in any disrespect but cassie literally was diddy's plaything that he occasionally would bring on the red carpet when he wanted eye candy there are many pictures where she looks uncomfortable and diddy looks like he doesn't even want to be there now i found a clip that i'm gonna play please watch diddy's body language in this video Thank what a beautiful you. dress you? you look thank you so much I wanted to ask you. Did you see that? I mean, I slowed it down and here are screenshots. He looks like he wants to go Ike Turner on her at any second. And I've seen that look in men. Those are the type of men that put their hands on women. Now, this is a picture that has resurfaced up 
of Cassie with a bruise to her lip. It looked like she's a, a busted lip. And there's also a bruise to her forehead. Now this picture appears to be from 2014. She was with Diddy at the time, so many are speculating that of course he was the one who put those bruises on her. Allegedly, because we can't be sure, even though she says in the lawsuit that he would beat her all the time. In the lawsuit, she also said that he beat her and sent her on a trip to Hawaii so no one would be able to see it. Now, she also posted um, a pair of glasses that were broken. Look at what it says. So it says, Cassie hashtag after and never again because I love my mommy. Now this was a caption she put under a pair of broken sunglasses. So it's very strange and that was I guess posted in 2014 as well. Now knowing he's put his hands on her, I don't know when it resurfaces up, it just seems like it was definitely a cryptic message. But I really believe that Diddy was pimping Cassie. I mean, soliciting her around the different states to different men and all his friends that hung around him, they knew about it. Cassie was able to escape 2018 by running off with Diddy's personal trainer that he had hired to train him as well as her. So she, you know, goes through this traumatic experience and dealing with that and falls in love with this personal trainer. They get married, they have kids. She's trying to move on from, trying her best, I think, to move on from what she experienced with Diddy. Now, this is the disturbing part. Can you imagine how she felt finally being able to escape the horrendous treatment she received from Diddy, moving on with her life, getting married, having kids, and this man comes and gaslights her by mentioning her in his award speech. I gotta give a special thank you to the people that was really like there for me. Bishop T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes. My chief of staff, Christina Corum. K.K. Laurie Gibson, keeping me free. Yeah, also Cassie for holding me down. <gasps> Diddy, are you serious? Like, you can't be serious. Like, this is so cringe. It's actually harassment to mention her name in a speech to thank her after everything you've done to her. Then you have your girlfriend, Young Miami or Young Nasty, I should call her, in the audience supporting you, holding up a sign that says Go Poppy on it. Cassie is, is married with children and is trying to get over the things that you put her through and you have the audacity, sir to get on stage and mention her in your speech, then it, it gets worse from there. He releases a song about Cassie and his relationship with her, and he titles the song, I Gotta Finally Move On. But he's not moving on, he's doing the opposite, in fact. He is continuing to antagonize and harass this woman, despite her trying to move on with her life. Everything she's endured, all of the physical, emotional abuse, being trafficked to different men, the acts that he had her engage in, filming her, all of these things. It's disgusting and it's disturbing. And it's hard to overcome those things in the first place. But how can you get over it when the person that's the cause of it continues to bring your name up? Cassie had probably got on the phone with her lawyers. She had enough. And even though she probably tried to, you know, handle it out of court, actually going to court, Diddy didn't take it seriously. He, I mean, this man thinks he's God. He acts like he thinks that he's God. He thought it was a joking manner. He didn't think she was actually going to expose him. Now, of course, we know that she ended up winning the lawsuit and he responded within 24 hours, which is crazy. And it looks like she may have got $100 million. That's what the rumor is now. His lawyers released a statement saying that just because he paid the money and they settled doesn't mean that he's admitting guilt. It very much does, sir. So now that we know 
the, the lawsuit was won and she possibly got this $100 million. There's a lot of people that are saying she shouldn't have taken the money um, and that's all she was after. That's her personal right and her personal choice if she wanted to sue Diddy for everything that he's put her through and continue to put her through just of this year. So I really think that people just need to fall back on that narrative. This is her body. This is her pain. And she wants to get paid for her pain. That is her choice and we we all just need to stay out of it i'm not mad at it girl 100 million dollars yes love that for her now this has opened the floodgates though for other people to come out against diddy there's rumors that danity kane and some of his other artists are going to come out there was some audio of 50 bringing up receipts so this is not looking good for diddy and i'm here for it you guys tell me what you guys think in the comment section